There he is. There you are. This is a first. The Christmas, uh, the, the Christmas boy is here. The Christmas boy, and uh, this is a first. This is our new New Year's Eve show, but it is not live. It's no, it's our first pre-record. This is pre-recorded, so who knows if we'll even be here. At, in, uh, in honor of that, I think your mic is a skosh hot. I think you could turn it down a click. My my mic is a skosh hot. All right. Is that better? That's a little better. That's a little better? Yeah, it's a little softer. Oh, little, okay. Yeah, that's good. It's not All clipping right. as much. Um, there we go. So, so you had Christmas. I had Christmas. You had Christmas. How was your Christmas? Christmas was great. It was very, uh, very relaxed. Small gathering. Uh, you know, you know the place. You know what we know where we're talking about. You know, know the whole setup. You were off in Mom's corner. We were in Mom's corner. That's nice. Um, and it was uh, it was great. We had a really nice time. I cooked a lot, and we had some gifts and watched some movies, and it was fun. Well, I got to hang out with the other brother. Yeah, the mystery brother. The mystery brother and and his wife and son. And uh, we had a great rack of lamb. We hung out. We yeah, drank he, a little batch 22. Nice. He mentioned that the, the rack of lamb was happening. And um, I was I talked to him in mid-process. How, uh, how did that go? How was it that was, lamb? It was only spectacular. Mm, okay. Yeah. It was All only right. spectacular. Well, there's always next year. Yeah. No, it was, it was really great. Um, and some great potatoes, garlicky potatoes, and then a lovely string bean, a good salad. What do you, uh, other, other than maybe a bagel and a schmear, I don't know what else you would possibly want. What else could you do? You know, this is, I'm having a really hard time right now, though, because, you know, it's, uh, it's only a little after two right now where I am. And uh, not drinking and doing this show at the same time, not Ch easy. Challenging. I'm it having is. my traditional coffee which is usually what I have, so it's much the same for me. Yeah, no, um, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. It's weird to shift in the time. Like, I'm locked in with you as a nighttime show. The mentality yeah. is very irreverently nighttime to me. Yeah. It's very hard uh, to, to feel like you can master that. Uh, although it's dark, you know, it's appropriately dark. Oh, it's we'll get dark into it. it. We're going to get in the mood. We're and Peter, is our guest, is very, very dark. He's very, very oh, really? sinister, dark personality. Oh, so okay. I'm looking it'll be forward to that. Huh. Um, Have you been watching anything this uh, this week? Any what did great we, holiday movies that you're? You know, I, I know usually you're really into the holiday feel good films. Oh yeah, it's a traditional yeah roster of of pleasant, you know, Little House in the Prairie episodes and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, we I did uh, I did show mom she'd never seen a new leaf do you, do you know that movie i know of it i haven't seen it so i we i have that i brought that up to show her she enjoyed that um sandy dennis and um no San, uh, sandy duncan no no, no again I'm, I'm completely wrong it's elaine may and walter Matthau. ah okay and I it's was... elaine may wrote and directed it i it, i think it's her first movie that she directed i think anyway it's great and um, ridiculously funny. So we did that. Did you watch a movie at uh, the Other Brothers? We didn't watch a movie there, but Christmas Eve, I had the traditional Jewish Christmas Eve of uh, a friend over for Chinese food. Okay. And we watched uh, Don't Look Up on Netflix. The new uh, disaster comedy with Leonardo DiCaprio. The disaster of a new disaster comedy. Wow. With Somebody Leonardo. doesn't care if they're working in Hollywood anymore. They're just going to say it. In I'm not working in Hollywood. No, is a lot of people who I admire greatly. Um, I, I, I like that the director's work. I like everybody's work. It just did not come together. Okay. And I, I would, I would put it on the writer, more, the writers more than anything else. It just didn't, it didn't quite come together. Well, I, I, I'm sorry to hear that. I was looking forward to that movie, well, and uh, now now you've ruined it for me. So I don't know well, what to do. Oh, no, hold on a se hold on a second. Hold on <laughs> a second. I didn't like it, and I didn't think it was very good, and that ruins it for you. 
I, I mean, may, look at our track record, buddy. You'll probably love it. I may love it. That's true. <laughs> I may say, think it's fantastic. What is wrong with my older brother? That but in, like I may, instead movie, of experiencing the movie, I'm going to be thinking about like, am I right or wrong? Is did I? Am I getting some, the right thing out of this? Oh, usually if your opinion is different than than mine, you're wrong. Yes. Don't, don't worry. Just, okay. Can, Just go about rest. my business, in other words. Yeah, you can rest secure in that knowledge. <laughs> I'm your older brother. I'm right about everything. True. Never it's mind true. the fact that you know infinitely more about film than I do. Uh, I've just seen more disgusting uh, video nasties. <laughs> video nasties? Is that a movie I can rent? Video Nasties? Well, we'll have to ask Peter. Peter might know if there is a movie called Video Nasties. Oh, uh, Video, Video Nasties, Nasties was the name was the name in, uh, as far as I know, he can correct us when he's here, but um, in Britain during the, the, the VHS craze, there were a lot of like straight-to-video horror movies that were called, you know, they were really ultra-violent ultra uh, and, um, and, and nasty. They were and they were called Video Nasties. So that and was the, the video equivalent of Penny Dreadfuls. There's Penny I Dreadfuls think so. and Video Nasty. I think so. We'll get we'll get Peter's la the last word on it from him, but um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, give give us a little uh, introduction to, uh, to okay. your friend Peter before we before we bring him on and, and embarrass him. Well, uh, Peter is here not just because he's a friend and a friend of the show, but he he's he's a filmmaker and he made a movie. Who you know. Uh, I, I made a movie, but I don't know, you know, not a lot of other people did. So we're like, why don't you come on the show? I didn't talk about the movie. movie. Uh, this was the, this was also a movie. We, we were friends before he made this and um, he knew I was editing. And this was the first feature, uh, narrative feature I, I, I edited. Uh, so I worked on this thing and had a great time. And um, Peter and I have done a few projects together and, and uh, it, 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 we've had a lot of fun. And, and it's a, it's a, a remarkable uh, f uh, first film uh, to have under your belt. You 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 know what what he accomplished with it is pretty is pretty amazing for for what for especially for what they had to work with. Um, not a huge budget, and I yeah, think no, it's it really, really entertaining. It's a, it's a terrific ride, and and kudos to you because I was able to follow the entire story, which which lets me know. That as an editor, you you put things in in the right order. Like I did. I looked at this. I looked at the script, and then I said, "That's in. That's there in the script. Put that in there. Move in the movie. In it, put it in the movie and put it. Yeah. In, put that in before that. Which because it's before. So, yeah. So so it all makes yeah. sense. That's all that it is. That's really. All. Thank you for noticing. It was in the correct order, and I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Peter liked that about it too. I think yeah. he, yeah. Although maybe yeah. maybe some of it is out of order, and I messed it up. He'll tell no, us. You, you probably learned a lot of that from your time as an actor, where you're making sure you say your lines in the right order. Exactly. People make a big deal about do you know your lines? Well, sure. Do you know them in the proper order? See, I've had trouble because I learn them in order. I memorize them in order. And I am going to say all of my lines from the beginning to the end in order. If another actor drops a line at some point during the you're, evening, we can be good. out of sync for the rest of the show. Right. Well, I hope you just make that known to the cast before you start rehearsals and everybody tiptoes around that. Yeah. The, don't Matthew's drop a line. A, Matthew's just going to keep doing the show. Yeah. Don't drop a line with me, baby. Cause... The good part is that we know you are going to keep doing the show. You know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> follow you but don't but you better not you know drop don't a line drop a line so um so i think we should bring on our, on our guest enough gabin let's uh, let's this, this um let's have our really? new year's our new year's episode because another big reason why this is here is because this movie centers around new year's and this is new year's time after christmas right we're heading yep. in so and there's aliens there's mayhem there's death yes there's disco and, and in spite of all of that, this is a better New Year's Eve than most of the ones that I have had. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. So. Well, maybe we just bring Peter on instead of telling those those sad stories. <laughs> okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Peter Stray. 
Oh, he's turned his back on us. UK stra oh. an entrance. Oh. The Arkin brothers. We meet at last. <laughs> he's managed an entrance on there Zoom. It's fantastic. I couldn't resist after you said I'm dark and wrong. That's why. Yeah, it, it, it was a sinister. Slowly, like a supervillain. Sinister entrance. Yeah. I told you, isn't he? Isn't he like? It's an eerie. <laughs> like, oh, it's so and, scary. I'm very eerie. Plus, plus, I'm, I'm, there's lots of old books behind me. So you know, there's a sort of a that's like, you read things. Yeah. That's weird. Oh. Who's doing no. that? these days no it's, it's my father's study he's a professor of classics oh. so he's uh, oh. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm 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 sort of piggybacking on his his uh, intelligence so i i have to ask you know before we really get into the the details of the film oh. this is sort of like a sequel to because I, I don't know a lot about your culture there but i i, I believe this is a sequel to um a child's Christmas in Wales sort of flows straight into. It uh, could be argued that. Progress. It could be argued that. Um, I, I mean, officially, I'd have to say no because obviously that's by Dylan Thomas and and this is by me. But um, there are some of the same themes. Um, I believe in Child's Christmas in Wales. The fire brigade is called here. They call the cops um, because of some kind of disturbance um i think there's probably drunkenness in both uh i grew up next to condonkin park which is like two seconds down the road from here which is dylan thomas local park he was born like just up the road from from me where i grew up um uh but other than you did that, read some of these books behind you you're a liar you're nah, coming off no, very no, no, smart none, none of those none of those are dylan thomas but right. um but he he yeah he, he uh uh, uh the, no uh, I, I would say it's 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 almost it has more in common uh, in terms of fictional ancestry with Close Encounters, with the Lost Boys, uh, with uh, you know things like that. With Dylan Thomas's The Lost Boys, yeah, Is that, that's what you're saying. To be fair, it, yes. it, it's not dissimilar. Like if Dylan Thomas just saw a whole bunch of vampire films, lived mm -hmm. a bit longer, didn't keel over at the White mm -hmm. White Horse Tavern in New York, right and wrote about aliens maybe he'd come up with this i, I mean he had a sense of humor right i mean oh, he yeah. was a funny guy so i think there there could be a thrill this is, this could have been one of his fever dreams absolutely i mean i mean the town of theregab in uh um under milk wood is bugger all backwards so uh um you okay. know, so he's using the all and then using the double l at the beginning of welsh names to like make a gag so all right I'm sure you get Dylan Thomas questions all the time. No. So let's let's no one say... in America. I live in America now. No one in America really knows much about Wales. They all just are like, yeah, we should save mm -hmm. the Wales. That's, you, know. you you taught me a lot about Wales. I was pretty ignorant yeah. about stuff when we met. Well, I think my favorite story while we were editing Canaries was actually that you were going to set on the Americans as as a featured actor, um, uh, sitting in the makeup chair with Matthew Reese. And I think you said different um, chair, yeah. just so we I, we oh, weren't yeah. in the same yeah, makeup you chair. You weren't sitting just on two chairs. Asking yeah, what you wanted for Christmas, um, <laughs> or, or him you. Um, but but um, I think I think you said, oh, I'm I'm editing a feature right now, and it was shot and is set in Lower Took, and apparently, yeah, <clears> there like was a, a bit of a spit take television. involved. He couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was that was lovely that that he uh, he got that you got that reaction out of him. At, 7 a.m. from a Welshman on a, in the, as the lead in a series. But again, the, the, all these Welshmen that show up in Hollywood, they're all like secret Welshmen. Nobody knows. It's like it's like Aussies or anybody else, you know. They do the accent, nobody knows. <laughs> Until you watch the behind-the-scenes stuff. Now, I'd, Matthew, you re, you're new to the movie. I, I, yes, I edited Canary, so I know it pretty well. Uh -huh. I'd, love you, I'd love you to start... Because I I have little I have less objectivity being so close to it than you do. So as a new person to the project, I'd love to hear what your qu questions are. My questions are well. First, I want to say that I loved it. Um, oh, cheers! I, I I I and and um, Tony will tell you I I I sometimes am am too honest. Uh, so I, I I did completely love this this film. It, it held me in its thrall. Um, I loved the 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 wacky sense of the wacky sensibility of it the the mix of characters from the oh. the ultra serious government folks to the the odd collection of characters in wales 
Uh, I loved so much of the misdirection, like for instance, the the scene on the 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 scene of the the government agent on the boat, and he's talking about no, they have to be in in separate containers, and he's going on and on about some containers, and you're thinking we're talking about something to do with with spy craft and weaponry, or and it turns out that he's talking about sandwiches and food or something. And uh, the, uh, yeah, for his daughter, I think he's, he's a yeah. single dad. Yeah, yeah, it's completely cracked me up. Um, but uh, you know, to set it up for for our listeners, uh, there there have been some strange goings on over the course of several decades. A couple of uh, uh, strange people getting military people getting killed in a forest, and bodies dropping from the sky, and some disappearances, and a photograph showing up of something that hasn't happened yet, and government people involved, and then we we cut to this. Um, Little village. How do you pronounce it again? There are no vowels in it, so I just get confused. It's uh, it's Lower Kumtuk. It's a family show. Could we just say that again, remembering <laughs> yes. that it's a family show? It's well. Um, one thing that I, I put online recently was was actually part of uh, um, a sort of an exclusive for, for uh, initially an exclusive for Abattoir, which is this wonderful horror festival in Wales that was one of our earliest champions. Um, uh, we did sort of a special thing for them where members of the American cast met the British cast for the first time on Zoom because obviously they'd filmed their scenes separately. So we all sort of decided to have a Zoom party. And one of the challenges was to get the American cast to try and say the name. I think um, uh, the great Scott Barrow, who plays um, Agent Stanley, who's the, the white guy in the control room, um, went with Lower Come Torch. Um, I think, yeah, I think there was some. There was come twitch. Uh, there, there were variations of it, but it's come tuch. So there's this all this. Well, put it this way: I don't know if you ever grew up watching uh, Black Adder, either of you, sure, in lads. But um, there's a great line in Black Adder, which is um, "Never ask for directions in Wales, Baldrick. You'll be washing spit out of your hair for a fortnight." Um, <laughs> There's so a bit, it's yeah. a little, there's a connection to it. Yeah, it's a, there's yeah. a Yiddish connection here. There's a, there's definitely, yeah, You'd we think can relate to more this. Jews in Wales. Yeah. You'd think there would, but there's yeah. about five of them. Well, we'll, co I'll come down the minute the, the, the COVID lockdowns are, are safer to, I'll get on a plane when I feel good about it. Definitely. Oh. Come, come to um, any place called Kum Toch, I want to be there. I know, and it's it's quite. I think a lot of Welsh was actually inspiration for a bunch of the languages uh, for Tolkien as well. Oh, that makes you sense. All the blah, 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 you know, all yeah. the rest of it, Elven yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, cameo from my dad. Here we go. Well, well, hello. Oh, oh, is, he, is, no, is he's, oh. He's, he's gone. No, is, where oh. is he? Oh. 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 Welcome oh, to wait, the show. I, welcome to the show, they say. No, no, he's gone. Ah. Ah. Um, brilliant, brilliant. It's, it's this is the... Hitchcockian. Um, <laughs> but it's also, it's, uh, 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 I really do want my dad to, I want to try and dress him one in the Henry Jones, the Professor Henry Jones hat with the. Oh, okay. Because when he's in Tweed, he really does look like Sean Connery as Professor Henry Jones. It's quite lovely. I would imagine. I'd oh, love right. to see that if he wants he to do that like during Sean the Connery. show. Any if he wants to do that dur during yeah. this recording, tell him yeah. we, we'd love yeah. to have uh, we'd love to have a Sean Connery impersonator if, on the if show. I, if I can be a, a proud son for a second, there is also a there is also a, a sidebar to this, which is that um, I always thought uh, my dad looked like Hen Professor Henry Jones, um, uh, and then uh, a few years later, he got a fan letter from the playwright Tom Stoppard saying, "Oh dear, Doctor Stray." Uh, um, uh, using your book to research uh, my, my latest play, but thoroughly enjoying it. You know, uh, best regards, Tom Stoppard, you know, this handwritten. Very book. nice. And then it disco uh, I discovered that um, Tom Stoppard ghost wrote all of Sean Connery's dialogue for um, Professor Henry Jones. Wait, Tom Stoppard is dead? No, Tom Stoppard's... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. He goes. You said he ghost wrote it. I got scared for a second. I, I, I... <laughs> he didn't write it for me. Obviously. Sorry. <laughs> So Sean Connery, sadly. Is not. Yes, that I knew, but alive. okay, thank you. All right. Yes. Um, so, so yeah, well, he, that's he, impressive. He, that's he, really. He, he wrote. Uh, he was hired uh, to write pretty much all of Sean Connery's dialogue and a lot of Harrison Ford's as well. All the father-son scenes in The Last Crusade. Hence the jump in quality from the previous film, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps, yeah. 
but um, yeah, that's 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 uh, stuff. So anyway, that's it. Well, uh, congratulations to your father. Merry Christmas oh, to him oh, and your family. Oh, and oh, uh, and you. any, if he wants to come back on the show, Lovely. please uh, let him. Yeah, no, he's, he's got quite a dramatic face. I was thinking, I mean, you know, your dad's in acting. Maybe my dad should pop into acting as well. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's easy, right? Like anyone can do it. Anybody can do it. Anybody's really, dad can do that. You're just walking and talking. So often not even walking. Sometimes yeah. just sitting and talking. Yeah. And or like, lying down sometimes if you're in a hospital bed in a movie or uh, something like that. Yeah. We Those just are good a murder jobs. mystery where yeah. one guy got a great scene at the beginning and then got killed. And, and then he was in several scenes as a body. You know why I like, know that your dad is smart? Like really smart? Um, because he's left the room? No, because, <laughs> well... <laughs> You, those are my lines. I'm supposed to. I'm the one who. On his own to talk about I'm the person who criticizes the show. Let me get this very clear. Um, no, it's the, it's the it's the cork board. Ah. There's a cork board behind you. I'm like that. Well, my, oh, my, my that's a genius. Also, Only geniuses would have that now. Still. My my dad is a wine enthusiast. I don't think he cannot have cork in his life. Okay. Um, yeah. So, no, I've, I've got the record, I see you. I see you as equal Statler and Waldorf. You know, um, equal uh, parts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But just slightly more negative. Oh no! I, I think I think there's even more uh, jovial ribbing, and I just I love it's it's so funny because I'm I I love watching the show, and especially during COVID, you know, and being in a foreign country, there are moments where you you know friends aren't available, you catch the low at least a little bit. I'm like, oh, I wonder if the Arkin brothers are on, and suddenly it's like you know you click and. And there's there's some conversation in the room, and uh, and it's funny because there are sometimes I I set myself the assignment of watching the films if I can before I see you guys banter about it, and sometimes I'm on Matthew's side and sometimes I'm on Tony's side. It's, it's uh, yeah, you've so emailed me cool. some. I can, never, yeah. I can never tell sometimes. Yeah, yeah, he's oh. emailed me some stuff about his his takes on stuff, and I'm like, right, what, where go ahead, you... side with my brother. That's totally cool. <laughs> where did you fall on Christmas Evil? Oh, um fascinating do you know i i've actually downloaded the mp3 of that episode to listen to on the train back to london but i have i have heard the first half i stayed up late listening to it uh on i guess did you do it christmas eve or christmas day you did it christmas eve live right uh, no because uh, i'm five hours christmas ahead oh, they, yeah. so yeah, yeah christmas eve so so i'm five hours ahead so you guys were on a decent schedule and i was just you know yeah. rubber um not because of you but because of the hour and um, there were some just wonderful moments that you pointed out, though, which I ag completely agreed with just the bizarreness of it. Like the, the guy, the guy, um, I mean, what was that kid's name? Like, uh, oh, uh, Diego Moss Bat or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Moss, like a... Moss Diego. Moss Diego. Yeah. It's like, this isn't <laughs> Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross. All right. It's, this it's, is it's like someone threw words. Word yeah. and name, word, word and name blender, yeah. like just what what comes up with Mos Diego, um, Mos Diego, um, but then also you know this just weird thing of the mud on the thing and marking the territory, mm. like there were just so many odd askew touches that I thought, okay, there's a, a great cult status element to this. I, Peter was Peter was more aligned with you on that one. Um, oh, I love this yeah. man. He's a um, man of rare. <laughs> Rare taste and refinement. Rare taste yes. and refinement. Yes. But then, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. May you live, may you, may, may, may you live a thousand, thousand years. years old. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite movie quotes. There you go. Uh, um, I have a couple of questions about this film because, you know, please. I've, I've watched, uh, some films being made in the past. Mm. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you, uh, uh, and I, I've watched Tony m make his movie, you know, w was along on some of that journey. No, know, know what he went through. You had, uh, I think, 47 or 48 international locations in this movie. Um, d d was this shot over a period of years? Did you have to raise money and shoot a piece of it and then get to the next location? Or was it was it shot all of a piece? Uh, not all of the piece, but it was most of the money was raised at once, um, and it really wasn't very much money. And I will say to anyone out there, any filmmakers, like if you can sort of legally work in the UK or you know who knows, uh, just just pop over here. I know great actors and crew. We can stretch that dollar. We really can. Um, it, Wales is already kind of the British Columbia of the UK, really. Like it, it played the Yorkshire Moors in um, an American Werewolf in London. 
Um, it, it's played part of the back cave, you know, but what I was excited about was it never really played itself. Um, as for the shooting, the, the, there were three main chunks. There was the Welsh stuff first, and then a few months later, there was the American stuff. And then one year later, again, as Tony had begun cutting the movie, we were talking about what could it really help to have. And so then there were two days of sort of reshoots and additional scenes done um, pretty much a year to the day when we started shooting the first Welsh stuff. We shot the second Welsh stuff. Okay. Um, Can I ask what the, th those were? Were you trying to acquire the Vietnamese portion of it through that period? Or did you already have that stuff locked down? Uh, that was, I'm trying to think when that happened. I think that happened after the American stuff, but before the Welsh reshoots. And that was done by my, my great friend, Daniel Hewitt, who is a um, music and drama teacher at a school in Hanoi in Vietnam. I bought a VHS camera on eBay. Uh, I bought, I found out what battery it had and I bought a spare battery for it. Um, because it was just, I turned it on and it was dead 20 minutes later. So I managed to track down a battery that someone else had on eBay. So I bought a second battery for it um, and gave him the instructions, sent him, you know, sort of sent it back with him to Vietnam and hoped that, you know, he could do some good footage. And I was thinking, you know, you never know with non-filmmakers, like, I wonder how this is going to come out. And I storyboarded the thing for him and all the rest of it. But he was like bloody Kubrick. It was like he was going out with a, a friend of his with a with a um, you know a sort of traditional Vietnamese hat you know get outside Hanoi in an area called Ninh Bin, and um, I think he shot like ten takes of the same thing. Um, well, it's terrific. It's a terrific moment, and I was watching it, and I was saying, in this low budget film that's shot in Wales, how did they get this footage? And 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 I I tried to picture you know did you just comb through hundreds of hours of stock footage until you found a shot that you could acquire that had a woman doing this and pointing up to the sky and 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 then realizing during the credits that no you were able to to wrangle this somehow it, it, what an achievement i mean it was just it was it's funny in the if you can write, I suppose it's that Robert Rodriguez thing of if you've got a turtle, you know, use the turtle, you've got the things that you have. If you've got friends who work internationally and you're like, well, I guess I could get a friend of mine who lives in this cool place to shoot some stuff with an iPhone, some wobbly stuff with an iPhone. Um, why, why not do that? Right. Um, the only thing I was obsessed about was I really wanted it to be genuine VHS because I've seen, you know, when something is shot 4K and then it's cropped to 4.3 and they put a few lines through it. And right. it just looks like 4K footage, which has been had some VHS filter put on it. So it's gotten a bit thing. better. But when we did it, there there wasn't there the the filters for that kind of stuff weren't as cool as they are now. Yeah, I, mean, I was watching professional TV programs where I was like, "That's yeah. not that's not VHS. That's mm -hmm. clearly not VHS." Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so so that was great. What I'm proudest of is that almost every location in the movie plays itself. So Martha's Vineyard is Martha's Vineyard. Washington, D.C. is Washington, D.C. Uh, Wales is Wales. The only two exceptions are Rendlesham Forest in England is a forest in, the, in Wales. And um, the um, inside of the hotel conference room that's supposed yes. to be in D.C. is actually in Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. Well, that's, um, that's interesting because I was, I was so impressed because that is very clear about each of those locations i've been to martha's vineyard i was like yep there we go we're on martha's vineyard and yes we are in washington and which is interesting is that the only one that i knew wasn't the actual location was the swapping out of the one forest in england for the other forest in england i i looked at it's it got a that sick. is not that is not i that's not that far he's an amazing <clears throat> To get a six cents for that I mean, kind of that's stuff. A, that's a, that's some that is some yeah. some, some uh, tree, tree. I've studied my deciduous yes. trees. Yeah. I will yeah. I will say this though is that I did research on Rendlesham. I looked at pictures of Rendlesham. Is there a forest in Wales I could go to that looks like Rendlesham? And apparently, since the Rendlesham Forest incident in 1980, something happened to the forest which changed how it looks anyway. So it doesn't look like it did in 1980. Wow. Well, the so, mulch, the mulch seemed completely Some kind of different. storm or something. Yeah, it's, it's all green and mossy. And if, yeah. you know, I have to say, too, I noticed how, uh, you know, talking about that, that was the mulch was period mulch, too. It was yeah. clearly from the 80s. And I, I don't know how yeah. you did that. Well, I actually rubbed it on some cassettes and some VHS tapes. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. I put it on the tree. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I played Margaret Thatcher's speeches to it, and it sort of withered a bit, you know. Did you always, this is something I never asked you, did you always plan to have a role in the movie as an actor? Oh, um, so yes and no, in that I figured I would do something minor to sort of pop myself in there, because, you know, I'm right. a trained actor, I occasionally still like to act. Um, but originally, I just showed up, sort of, I, I was uh, the voice on, on the Vietnam footage, because then I could do that and that would be easy. And then um, I was going to show up at the end to sort of like, um, you know, potentially sort of plant the seed that maybe I could have a bigger role in the sequel, and it, it, which I'm, I'm still pitching to BAFTA and people like that. Um, but uh, then with the pub scene with Robert Pugh, that was added later. Oh, my God. And, and I thought to myself at that point, you know, it was very clear from what people had told me. You know, oh, if you want to get some footage for your reel, then your reel is basically you doing some nice stuff with some famous people. So I thought, okay, I'm going to write myself a little exchange with the with one of the most well known actors in the cast. Right, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is how show business works. This is these. This is what happens. You want to see creative decision making. It's really ultimately just what can I do that gets on a reel. Well, can uh, we talk about yeah. Robert, Can we talk about Robert Pugh's performance? We certainly can. Moment, I mean, that is money that performance is just spectacular oh he's brilliant i mean bob Pugh, like uh, this is a man who shows up um for really not much money certainly less than someone of his stature in america mm. would ask for and um and his agent okayed this you know and so he, sh he shows up and he does a full day of complicated dialogue uh, uh you know dialogue heavy scenes and then right at the end of the day we do his death scene last sort of surprise you know, hand grab death scene, and he, you know, he's 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 an old dude. He just he he asks for a hand down, and then he just lies in the mud and does this fantastic death, um, and then you know gets helped up, uh, and at that point his trousers had split. So I just sort of needed to hold a jacket in front of him <laughs> while gu gu guiding him back to to uh, to incredible uh, his, his holding area. Um, but yeah, he was brilliant. Um, and I mean, you know, he's talking, he's telling stories about, you know, sort of getting into a fight with Russell Crowe on the first day of Master and Commander. Uh, oh my you know, God. Crowe Crow was apparently throwing his weight around and, and Pew stood up to him. And um, as a result, Crowe respected him and, and they became oh, mates. One of those stories, uh, yes. I hear yeah. those all the time. Why can't we just yeah. cut past that? And let's like, know, exactly. why don't you just start by being nice to me yeah, instead of having yeah, to have me make you like me? for talking up to a bully like exactly. well let's just avoid exactly. it exactly exactly but then you know on on the uh on the um uh rarely seen ridley scott robin hood which was made a few years ago a lot of which was shot in wales um crow recommended him to ridley scott for a part in that mm. so uh yeah but he also what he just loves to work so he's been doing student films he's you know he's been doing short films the funny thing is, if you go to Wales, like, oh, I've got Bob Pugh in my film, everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, again, he's done tons of stuff. Right. But a lot of it, given the nature of perhaps the um, the drive of some people who make films or money or other things, a lot of them don't get seen. So I was one of the ones where it, it, it did actually get seen and, you know, it had a, a nice festival run and a bunch of bunch of big screenings. Um and uh, he he came along to to almost every one of them. Uh, that's to, that's know, amazing. Stuff like that, yeah, yeah. He's a he's a top bloke. He's a real professional. That's so really cool. Nice and what I love is one of the first Arkin Brothers things I saw was the 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 Rutger Hauer Sylvester Stallone thing where I'd <laughs> seen it years ago and suddenly I was like, wait a minute, that's Bob Pierre was the IRA informant who has one scene with. Rook yes, before getting that's shot. right. It's a, actually a great. It's one of my favorite yeah. scenes in the movie. As yeah, I recall. it's a young, a young Bob. I was like, oh, yeah. no, that's him. You know what's uh, interesting yeah. about about uh, so? Well, let's just make it clear. When you're looking to see this movie, if you're out there hunting for it, there's two titles that you might find. <laughs> yes. You want to explain that a little bit, Peter? Okay, I will. So, so I called it Canaries. Um, I called it Canaries because I had a, 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 you know, it was influenced by a, a dream with lots of sort of yellow rain mac figures standing against the stark Welsh landscape. And I thought, oh, that's cool. I wonder how I could, you know, I just knew that it was that. And it was rain mac Max being uh, over here. We're just rain slickers, like yellow, raincoats. Yeah, yellow raincoats. 
And I woke up from this dream and I thought, oh, that could be really good in a movie. I wonder, you know, and the first thing I did was look on Amazon to see how much uh, it was per raincoat. Um, you, are, you, know. you are an independent filmmaker, know, sir. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so but anyway, so, so that was what I knew. And then I had to fit everything around that. And I still, some people still, uh, you know, it's a, I suppose it's a bit, not that I'm comparing myself to this film, but some people ask like, okay, well, you know, it's called Canaries. Why is it called Canaries? And some people are like, oh, well, it's because it's the first sign of danger, like a canary in a coal mine. And right. Wales is famous for coal mining. And I'm like, that's brilliant. Didn't intend that at all. Um, I don't know why I called it that, but then later on I thought, why don't I justify it by having the um, research that the DOD does into UFOs be called Project Canary, because that implies yellow, and it's a C, which is after Project Blue Book, which is blue and a B. So so I was like, Smart. oh, that sounds kind of sequential, you know? And then the next one could be Project Diamond or something, and it's it's green. I don't know. Um but uh, uh, yeah. So but you're so, using so, so, so you're, you're 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 clearly a member of the Illuminati. You use numerology in their screenplays, I'm, and you uh, claim not to have read any of the books behind you. I I don't believe that. Ah uh, yes, it's, it's many texts that I would just you know we'd have to go into a vault. I'd have to you know bait you know bathe right. in the ceremony. Um, but no. Uh, so then it gets sold to the states, and I talk to the U.S. distributor, and he is on the phone with me, and he's like, "Listen, Peter." American people are stupid. They need to be told exactly what it's what they're getting. And I'm thinking, no, they're not. You know, I know loads of intelligence. He's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, but these are the people who just, you know, they they, they, they just they get drunk and they rent DVDs, whatever. They need to be told exactly what they're getting. It needs to be called alien something. It needs to be called alien something. So I'm like, oh great. All right. So he's gonna call it like alien battle or something terrible. So I so I was instantly racking my brains thinking, how could I keep the fun in this project? So the best thing I could do was think to go really grindhouse and call it Alien Party Crashes. So luckily, he, I say luck, luckily, he took my suggestion. So despite the fact that it has awful looking artwork, um, it's on Amazon to be all that stuff as Alien Party Crashers. So that's how you can find it in the United States of America. Yeah, Peter and I were both making our movies at the same time, and um, I actually was editing Canaries on a break from Sender, shooting Sender, and then Sender ran into so many like pitfalls during filming uh, that we we Peter ended up like giving his film to festival before we were finished actually shooting. It was an incredible. You we got can, uh, Canaries done very quickly. Um, it was an yeah. amazing thing to watch the process of of selling to an American distribution company and what what they knew the demands were going to be and changing the poster. When I knew that the artwork you had come up with and the stuff that was popping in UK was so much more interesting um, than what it seems like a lot of US distributors want to do, but I, it was kind of eye opening for me. I knew that. Um, people could get screwed. I didn't think you got screwed. I was just really interested in in how they got to where they got to with the poster, for instance, you know? I, I think that there are people who need to put a certain amount of expenses on a movie when they when they distribute it. You know, it's like, oh, I need to justify that there's this much spent on a poster or a trailer. And, and to some extent, I understand that. They want to put their stamp on it. They want to do their own thing. Um, and they supposedly know their audience but unfortunately a lot of their audience are smarter i think than they think they are mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that you need some like delicate intricate poster with like five thousand faces on it you know because you used to see those in giant you know movie movie uh, theaters you know with framed and lit up and now they're all on these tiny little right. thumbnails so sometimes you need but that's why me and the um uh, european sales agents went with just you know a little little yellow pop of of someone in a in a rain mac um, which I still think is a better poster than what America came Yeah, with, it's right? really cool. I remember it vividly. Um, I mean, I, I, you're, the American poster is funny. I, it, the fact that there's a floating dog on it, I find hysterical. Yeah, I just, I just, that's the sad thing is that, you know, you, there's so much about distribution where it's like, let's do this, let's do that. And they even did this, this um, I actually really liked the first half of their trailer because they used all this found footage stuff, which is not in the movie, that they, they like comped in you know, UFOs from the film, especially into this trailer. I'm like, wow, I've got extra 
deleted scenes which are yeah. deleted scenes you know especially but then it's it's disappointing to audiences because then it's like where's the dog where's the scene where this happens and there are people in a helicopter it doesn't happen also for those of you out there who still uh watch dvds and stuff because of special features like like me and like i know peter uh you you went to town on this on that you did great commentary two commentary tracks right Oh God, I, I did commentary kind of like it was an NPR, like sort of special radio. Uh, um, yeah, it was the way it should be done. It's great. But what I love was that it was just as guerrilla as the actual film itself, because um, so the, the great Rob Karma Robinson, who plays uh, Ailes, Agent Miles Kendrick in the film, believe it or not, that's his first feature film. Like, I think he's terrific in it. And I, I was I was telling him he. I think he really channels this kind of like John Carpenter era Keith David a little bit. Yeah, he does. Um, yeah, this sort good. of intensity. And the only place I could find to um, do the commentary with him that was quiet on the streets of New York, just around the corner from Pace, because I just finished shooting something with you, Tony, right. was um, a Bank of America vestibule. So I'm in there with a laptop playing the movie and my iPhone recording him. And then just occasionally we'd have to stop because you could hear beep, 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 you know, but it was the quietest place around. I I looked in restaurants and there was just constantly like music playing in the background. Recorded in a vestibule. I know in a bank of America, but and, you know, and I, I, I use bank of America. Well, however you did it, it's great. The, the, the yeah. commentary tracks are great. You also, there's a lot of really cool special features on it. So if you like indie movies and like, you know, people that are passionate about like keeping the fans happy with a lot of stuff and material. The DVD is a great, uh, great, see, I'm it's such really a cool for that. So yeah, I edited all of that stuff. There's gag reels, there's deleted scenes, there's all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and you know, and I had to pay for that in the UK because the, the British board of film classification makes you pay for every minute that they watch on the DVD to certify with a rating, oh. which doesn't happen in America. So it's yeah. kind of a, it's, hmm. a, it's a bit of a racket. It's not dissimilar to um, what the British government right now is doing with COVID tests, where the only official COVID tests you can take to fly are ones that you have to pay for. Whereas, so it's ironic because because the US and the UK are kind of swapping places, whereas you can go to a CVS and get COVID tests for free. Anyway, that's getting all political. But um, uh, yeah, but but yeah, I I love special features. I'm such a geek for that. So I, yeah, me too. Course, there's no way I could do what some people call a vanilla disc. Well, it's not what she said. Hey, now. <laughs> I mean, Sorry. I'm it's definitely, what? I'm definitely. Speaking vanilla, of editing. <laughs> vanilla with dark chocolate chips. <laughs> um, ladies, ladies you, you, my name is easily Googleable. You can find I have no criminal records and um, I'm, I'm available. Oh, there you go. Oh. Well, because, you know, because I have to justify my existence for five minutes as a, as a film professor, uh, I do have to talk about some of the the visual elements in the movie that I thought yes. were spectacular. Um, I, you know, I, I teach visual story classes in uh, visual storytelling at both the undergraduate and graduate level. And there are some shots in this movie that I am going to pull out and show to my students as examples of how you transmit a tremendous amount of information in a very short period of time. Uh, and one example of that would be the shot, the first shot in the pub, the first, when we introduce Robert Pugh and oh. we go into that pub and there's, you know, there's this pub with a glass knocked over. The first thing we see is this glass knocked over on the bar. Yeah. And you, you rack focus and then pull back from that, I think. Mm. And it, it tells us instantly so much about where we are and what has happened there already. Mm. Um, and, 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 and fills us in on the world. And so much of that doesn't happen um, in, in not student films, but in, in professional films I, I, I watch where there's just wasted time where we could where you could be cramming it with information and and you did that um the shot of the of the um the dj and the what the the woman who he's interested in who's not interested in him mm. on the balcony yes where there you know we so often see frame within a frame but you've got two frames there and mm. the divider and they're in separate worlds and they can't get to each other 
out on that balcony. And then each time we see them, they're in a clean, in a clean single. And the, the sense of separation is so clear. I love that. The alien, the, the alien POV death sh shot is, I screamed. It's a spectacular shot. Oh, that exterior <laughs> night the, shot. The, the No, the hand. Oh, with the, the claws. Hand, the claws, yeah. The claws, the POV of the claws, and then the yes. spear coming through. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's great. Um. And that was definitely, shot. I think, my most Peter Jackson moment, I think, early That Peter was Jackson. very, yeah, <laughs> that was very Peter Jackson, early Peter Jackson. And the shot of the four of them on the couch when they're, when they're lost and they just don't know what the hell to do. Um, uh, you know, so many moments like that that just sang out to me. Um, and then I just have to go to what I thought was just masterful dialogue so often. Um, nothing fishy, just delishy. Um, made me pee. Um, the discussion about screen size. Ah, yes. Please. The, the, the Hysteria. Yeah. The department, yes. Um, I'll even throw in a cover story about how we're just platonic friends so you can try and shag the Indian bird. <laughs> it's one of my favorite lines of dialogue ever. Um, the, the clandestine language of got this thing by airmail owner taking a nap, want to talk. <laughs> it's a great bit of spy dialogue. Uh, and then scaredy puff. Oh, scaredy puff. Yeah. Scaredy puff. Uh, the tennis racket with knives in it. Great. Yep. Great stuff. And, um, if you were here, what? You'd DJ me to death? That was... <laughs> I fell off the couch. Um, but, uh, Tony, you know, you, Tony and I, I, we've started this thing. I don't know how, how up to date you are on our episodes. We've started this thing now where with every episode, we, um, we decide, uh, we each have to say who we would be in the movie and who the other fellow ah, would be in the movie. I love that. So, um, uh, Tony, who, who, who would you be and who would I be? Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it's not Peter. It, it's who we are as people, not who we mm. would necessarily play mm -hmm. in the movie. I, I hope that I'm Selwyn. Which one is he? The fish guy. Selwyn, Selwyn is. Um, uh, I mean, I don't think it's. I don't think it's too much of a plot spoiler to say that he's he's a complete red shirt, which is ironic because he has a blue shirt in the movie. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't see it that way. Tony. Is he I the mean, one who doesn't who doesn't respond about the corkscrew? Um, no, that's that's Hugh. Hugh's the sort of the sort of Welsh redneck character. Oh, okay. Um, and I always yeah. I always thought that I was the silent, the drunk guy on the on the couch who didn't really have much to say at the party. I think, I see. I think after after a few, Tony, you might be that. But I I always saw you, you know, like in a general sense. I I definitely see you more as 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 Kendrick because of your interest in UFOs in general. Like I think you're, if wow. you had it, if uh, I if you had a DOD clearance, I okay. think you would be. Um, I'll take that. Taking Kendrick, like I'm, just I, jump, would, like, I would totally take that. Following those around the uh, the globe. Um, or possibly my character, who's you know the amateur version of that, who's been helping Kendrick for a while. Right. Um, I yeah. put us in there as uh, with me as the guy asking if there was a corkscrew, and you the guy looking at me, not freaking responding. <laughs> so, so you're the posh guy from London, Matthew, and and Anthony's the hick. I, well, I can think of him as a hick. I thought of him as looking you, at me like you're a you, jerk. I, I know you who we are. Him, you thought of him as the guy with the poop emoji T-shirt, is what you're trying <laughs> yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's all nice. right. I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a clear sense of what Thanksgiving dinners look like. <laughs> I think that uh, I, my, my, my feeling is that uh, I am the uh, the cop, the local cop in Martha's Vineyard, <laughs> and Matthew, you are the, you are, she's female, but you are the forensics doctor in the sand. I think we work together on Martha's Vineyard, and I think <laughs> that's, that's who we are. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
we also do uh, we also do comps movies that we would want to see this on a double bill with. Oh, wow, um, wow. Okay, what did you come up with? I came up with two. One of them was one of them was Sender. I think this was a terrific double bill with Sender. You know, no one. This could be the same universe. This is just happening right I, down the block from Sender. I, I did yeah. say to Tony, if I ever do something sci-fi again, I want to have like a little cutaway. There are a series of files and Project Canaries in one, and like Project Senders in another. But it's like just you know, it's like the, the Raiders of the Lost Ark sort of final shot. You could like go past little boxes where one of them says Project Canary, one of them says Project Sender. Right. Um, yeah. The other comp I have is, uh, not comp, but 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 uh, double feature, is The World's End. Oh, yes. Yeah, people in pubs, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's also some British reviews mentioned this, and I don't know if you know it, because it's not as widely known. You can see it in this country. Is There's an Irish film called Grabbers which is um oh yeah i've seen grabbers yeah so it's you know it's a, basically a bunch of drunken irish people versus aliens versus mine being a bunch of drunken welsh people versus aliens and um they have a much bigger budget than i do um and th there's some really great moments in the film and the thing that's especially interesting to me is that the creature design is so great and i think it was pretty much completely stolen for the force awakens there's a there's a creature which is basically a ball with tentacles and it can roll itself, you know. So it's like those. What are they called? Grat, grat fox or whatever they are that that um, Han Solo has on his ship in the Force Awakens. And um, ah, it's very. I mean, the creature design's pretty darn similar. Um, uh, whereas no one else has tried to do uh, uh, fishermen from Massachusetts who've been abducted by aliens, injected with alien DNA, and then dropped into a Welsh valley to kill Welsh people. So, you know. What yeah, that back. is very rarely, very rarely <laughs> done. Oh, another shot I that I forgot to mention. Oh, oh, sorry. Another shot that I no, forgot please. to mention that cracked me up was the whole the map, the the map with the was it Captain Crunch, or Kicks the cereal Skittles. or Skittles on the map to show the Yellow location Skittles, of, yes. of yes. things because they didn't have a map with pins. I yes. was, is Skittles the ET candy? Was that the was that an ET reference? Um. Not purposefully, because no. it was either it was either peanut M and M's or or it was either like M and M's or Skittles. I think it was Skittles and E T, wasn't it? Nobody that. cares about that anymore, huh? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's um, move along. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's definitely a thing of like, uh, you know, you can hopefully sort of wink at the audience about the low budget nature of what I'm doing by saying, well, this is a kooky department, you know. It's and to be fair, it's kind of what the X-Files was doing at the beginning when they had no budget and they were a mid-season replacement because they were, um, they were, you know, Mulder's down in a basement for two reasons. One, because it's a fringe division and two, because it means the set doesn't cost much money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's, it, there's definitely, there's a lot of, you know, the, the X-Files I think is a huge, a huge influence as well. As I don't, I also want to go back to the Skittles thing because I think that was a little sneered at. There are so many Spielberg references in this film. Oh yeah, it's there's loaded with them, so oh. you can't you can't deny that the Skittles reference, if that was in ET, would be something in future you might want to say. Yeah, no, totally on purpose. Uh, I guess it was just out I mean, of ET and closing to me. ET, everyone's favorite. You know, everyone ignored all these classics in night. Part of me doesn't like ET as much because all these great films in 1982 were ignored as a result. You know, Blade Runner, The Thing, all the rest of it. But whereas. Close Encounters for me is the is the is the far superior Spielberg alien film. Well, you and I um, totally agree on that. You know that. Um, yes, um, and the Close Encounters is far and away, you know, one of the biggest influences in terms of that sense of sort of sure. wonder and oh my god, all these things could be. All happening. I'm saying is there's no Skittles or M and M's in Close Encounters, and there are in ET. Uh, yeah, true. There's and they potatoes, play a significant there's... part of, in your film. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I'll have to look at ET and consult. ET we should have covered this in the pre-interview. I think Skittle, that's probably Skittle what experts. Yeah, about that. But no, um, but Close Encounter is one of the biggest things that influenced me, and this actually came up against a lot of criticism in the editing process, uh, which I know you'd be on my side about. But you know, there's a lot of people elsewhere where they're like. Peter, we don't understand, like, you've got, like, there's a cold open, and then the film should start, but then there's a cold open, then there's another cold open, then there's another cold open. 
before you get to Wales. And what I was uh, inspired by, by that structure was, you know, you're in New Mexico, then you're in the, the air traffic control, then you're in somewhere else. You're like 15, 20 minutes in before you meet Richard Dreyfus. Can, so can you give me the phone number of the... these people so I can just call them and say you're idiots? <laughs> First I mean... of all, it's like, have you ever seen a Chris Nolan movie? The whole damn thing is cold opens. That's the <laughs> two hours of cold opens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, admittedly, I, I didn't have a heist in an opera house. So I... Uh, but I, you I, mentioned I, an opera house. I did mention an opera house. That's true. Yeah. I actually had someone who said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you shot a scene in an opera house and then the lights come up after intermission and there's one seat that is bare. And I'm like, that's great. That, do you know how much that would cost me to shoot? <clears throat> And the irony was, actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be the, the opera house in um, Tenet. It's supposed to be an opera house in Hamburg, and they think it's the Oslo Opera House, which is the one that I mentioned in Canaries. So that's the actual bloody opera that house. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so it all, all comes around. It all comes around. Is there a sequel in the works? Oh, my God. I've written the entire outline of a sequel, I'd love to do it. Um, no one currently wants to give me the money. And I'm raising money for something else, which is a much simpler idea. I'd love to get to it. One day, I think I promised myself that I will continue this story if it has to be me drawing um, the characters in crayon and just, you know, or, you know, like I, I animate like little pens being like, oh, hey, Shanita, what did you say? Uh, hey, it's just canaries. Mm -hmm. And then there will be. You're halfway like, there. Now, then there'll be like the yellow. Um, there'll be like, hang on, I think my mum's got one here. Then there's like, I just, I just multi-track like these, and then like that. There are the canaries. It's like, oh no, the canaries are here. And yeah. I just, I using the the, the the magic of of special effects. I just um, multi, you know, whatever it is. As they say, you could fix that in post. Uh, you fix know, uh, the, post. one of the troubles is that you know, for those of you at home who don't know, actually, for those American listeners. What's really actually very interesting about this movie is is the is the the cast is really remarkable. I think if you were in UK, you'd be a little bit more like, "Wow, I've seen them all over the place." Yeah, a few um, Americans have have seen a bunch of folks actually, and that's thanks to you know BBC America. Sure, of... yeah, but I mean, it's really like this is the, they're huge gets for you in this film, and they're oh. really wonderful performances in this movie. Yes. I think that's. Um, uh, to me, that's always like the the big missing ingredient from a lot of micro budget, yeah. low budget films is that, you know, you see that they can do some fun stuff with the with the effects, you know, in camera stuff, low budget. There's a lot of stuff you can do, but really having quality writing and quality performances in the middle of these movies is rare, I think. And um, you I mean, really had true. that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm well, I mean, I suppose the advantage of you know, growing up a, a, around actors and being an actor is, you know, I also, um, a huge thing was, was that um, Craig Russell, who played Steve Dennis, the DJ, and, you know, is one of my oldest friends. Basically, Craig is great. Yeah, He's so good. He, he basically became the producer during pre-production and he took on this mammoth job and, you know, he sort of found an extra calling in a way because... Um, and the he, friendliest guy in, in the world. The, such yeah, a nice guy. He's so brilliant. Like he, and, and that inspires confidence, you know, and it's sort of a mindset you, we want to keep moving forward is you know if we've got nothing else we've got a good attitude and then mm -hmm. people want to come back hopefully and work with us again and um the the i you know what happened with him was that we were looking for a line producer and looking for other people and then he's like wait a minute i'm shooting in my hometown i know everybody why didn't i just knock on everybody's door and ask right. for help right. um so it became and and again that became about him being one of the nicest and most helpful people in the world you know regardless if your car's broken down in a lane in Kumtuch or if you're making a movie is that he will help you mm -hmm. um so uh that was a huge huge part of it and you know D Dominique Dorr who not only was the person who who um got us most of the money but who also said I'm gonna get you a bunch of money and also do you mind if I write the score for you and you're like <laughs> so, not if you write the score that you write for like, he did such a great job I mean yeah so that was terrific. I mean that was tremendous so 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 I've got to you know shout out to those people and then because of craig and who he worked with he worked with some of you know the, the, i suppose it's not dissimilar like if you look at stuff that's shot in canada like you see the same people pop up and in wales it's even smaller and so mm -hmm. it's um you get you know some fantastic welsh character actors a lot of whom have worked 
with each other before. So there was this real sort of ensemble tight knit um, uh, camaraderie there. You know, you got Richard Milan who um, did a BBC series here called Waterloo Road, but is also known for the the third series of a, a BBC comedy called Coupling, which did quite well, and he plays Naveen. Um, and uh, it, yeah, you know, Sheena Batessa was actually someone I hadn't worked with before. I'd auditioned, he plays Sunita. Mm -hmm. I'd auditioned her for a short film in 2005, and she was my second choice. I thought she's not quite right for this, but she's, she's really, really good. And I just, I just, names just stick in my head in like a database. So um, I remembered her and I auditioned a bunch of actresses, but I asked her if she was available and she put herself on tape and, and she was great. Um, and she didn't know anyone and she was, you know, uh, she just like rolled around in the mud with everybody she's else. Done, she's dynamite in it. Yeah, yeah she's, she's great. And, and then we've got Hannah Daniel, who's in Hinterland, which is a Welsh series available on Netflix over here. Um, I mean, it's Welsh in, in the UK. It's actually bilingual. You can watch that. They, they've recorded it in Welsh and in English. And then there's a bilingual version as well. Um, in the US, it's it's they're, they're only speaking English. And she's one of the four leads in that who plays Agnes D, who's the uh, the the the, the, uh, the blonde woman in the film. Um, not a traditional horror blonde in many senses, I don't think. No, um, not at all. Yeah, and um, uh, uh, she she you know it was it was amazing to get her. And then you know further up the line we have um, you know we've got we've got Kai Owen who's one of the leads in Torchwood, the BBC show Torchwood. Um, playing uh, a definitely a sort of William Atherton in Die Hard character, um, you know, or Paul Gleason in Die Hard character, definitely, you know, as her boss. Um, and what I particularly liked was that his character in Tortured was so nice and has been through all this stuff with aliens and time travel. And then this is somebody saying aliens don't exist, time travel doesn't exist. Um, and then it reveals later he was covering it all up. Um, and then his on-screen wife in Torchwood, Eve Miles, who plays Gwen Cooper, one of the, the, the female lead in Torchwood, did a voice on the radio for us. As did my friend. Oh, that's Mary. right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, as did my friend Sophie Aldred, who uh, played Ace to Sylvester McCoy's Doctor Who back in the day. Um, I would have. So I would. Uh, whole lineage of old geek friendly names. Yeah, I, I definitely would consider like having a double bill with this and uh, you know Torchwood Children of Men, the the TV movie that the, the Torchwood uh, did, the two wow, hour that's a compliment. Yeah, um, it shares some of the same DNA in a way that that's not that's a little bit more horrific than your movie. Although mm. your movie has plenty of chills and spills, I I tell you, you know, I'll be forever grateful for giving me my first opportunity to cut like an action sequence. That was that was quite something. I, I can't believe that was the first one you cut. You know, I, I, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I remember we sort of similar to, I suppose, you know, when people um, uh, are sort of shooting and they're like, all right, what do we need to prioritize? It was definitely editing wise. I was like, what what are what are the primary sequences? What do we need to prioritize? And um, the scene with Naveen on the bridge was a huge one because that took like several different sections to shoot and it was the one thing on set as a director where i was like i don't know what i'm doing actually. yeah well i remember you that was a hard that part of it was a hard shoot for you and and making sure you had all the pieces was a little bit uh, yeah crazy. and I, I went back and got more in the reshoots and mm -hmm. that was uh, thanks to some of your your really good notes as an editor it comes and, together um, beautifully that sequence it's yeah, terrifying but it, it definitely i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna use my pens again but it um it definitely makes me think you know that's why there are directors who have little models of the sets and they have little gi joe figures and mm -hmm. they're like this is where this person is this is where this yeah. person is now we're moving here now we're doing this for sequences like that i absolutely should have done that so it was a total film school in what i should have done right. um Luckily, most other things I was slightly ahead of the curve just because I was so nervous I'd, I'd prepared for, you know, crap loads of stuff. Now, this new project you're working on, mm. uh, does it involve uh, two middle-aged Jewish brothers in the United States? Or... or who maybe travel to Wales, you know, two Jewish guys from New York who go to Wales? No. I smell a hit. I smell a hit. <laughs> um, I would love that. No, I keep saying to Tony because we just, we keep geeking out uh, you know, it's interesting, and I think we, 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 we definitely initially started geeking out about films in general. Then I discovered he was an alien nut like me. Then we just went off on that for a long time, especially while I was prepping Canaries. You know, we were just sharing all kinds of links to sightings and stuff like that. And for the record, I'm not, I'm not a complete nut bar when it comes to this. I'm definitely, I'm definitely halfway between a Mulder and a Scully. Like, I want to believe, but I'm definitely on the side of science and facts. Um, but... 
in recent years, we've really been, I feel like, getting into folk horror a lot more, like talking about folk horror. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, well, now that know, the government admitted it, admitted it all, it's not as fun. It's so, fun. Yeah, you're gonna it's switch like, oh, up. Here's the drone shots, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, and now they're going to fly that telescope into space. Yeah. It's going to be like, oh, look at look at no. planet LV five two five. They've got a Starbucks there, and you know. No, um, now it's got to be folk horror. Yeah. Go back to the fairy fairy lands. Exactly. That's where that's where it's at. Exactly. So folk horror. So the next one's got a lot more of a folk horror feel to it. No aliens in it. Um, but you know, could could there be a couple of Jewish brothers like walking around in the background? Absolutely, they could. Just a um, thought. Just a thought. Just keep it in the back not, of your mind. Not, but also, I definitely, I'm, I'm so into the kind of, you know, the mixture, the clash of worlds, as I am with the, with the Canaries thing, where you've got this different textures between the sort of sleek blues and greys of DC, and then you've got all this sort of comfy jumpers of, of, uh, you know, Welsh valleys. That's what I loved about American Werewolf as well, and things like that. So, you know, I, I, I'd love the idea that. Um, if we could find a way just you know, saying like, we're available yeah, around like, kicking around like uh we can drink to, scotch to, to, and, to and you guys drink over to a welsh valley to shoot something like i would love that and i was saying to tony like you know your next thing man come over and do a horror movie in wales me and craig will sort you out with all the just direct some stuff mm-hmm. where there's some satanists and you know i'm waiting for a call sheet just some, waiting for the car to come some, pick me you know, up i'm here sheep, you know maybe there's like a like an evil sheep god that's like yeah. coming around you know uh, i'm in love i Actually, love maybe evil that could be god. you two like one of you on the other one's shoulders you know for height and then you, you're yeah. dressed up as a sheep and it's like uh, you know, uh, it uh, when are you, when you well after the show you call my agent i'll give my agent's number well that he can talk about whether they're yeah. We're, we're we're a two-person sheep or actually have lines in the film i don't know i mean i don't, I I don't want to make any one person and a ladder for static shots but we do need yeah. to talk about walking maybe it's um, one person and a ladder i think we're getting ahead of body. ourselves i i we were just <laughs> right. saying we'd like to be involved as actors in something maybe uh, theoretically sometime i want to see if i can this this might be something that gets edited, but I just want to see if I can show you something in my. Nothing's going to get edited out. Parents, nothing. Oh, nothing. Okay. Well, let's see if I can show you something in my parents' living room. Which oh, is, look at this! This uh, is an action shot. This is fantastic. I know, Great. I know. This looks like dust boot. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, right, we lost you. Frozen. We lost. Oh no! Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, you're back. back. Oh, you're in and out. Hang on, I'll come back. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, so this is... other boot. Oh, now this is like a shot from the from the nineteen seventeen. That movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. So here's a, a here's a folk. Here's, this is a clue as to the next film I'm working on. It. I definitely want to do something oh, about. Oh my it. god. Um, an evil, I've read the script. I've read the script. It's a it's a it's a it's yeah. a doozy. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And my parents didn't know about that. They it's just I, I always grew up. It's got nasty little yeah. teeth. Yeah. <laughs> nasty little teeth, yeah. Um, <laughs> it is the rabbit. But look at this. It just, look, now it's a nice little Christmas. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Folk wow. horror. Folk horror. High tech horror. Folk Sci- horror. Sci fi. Folk horror. Sci fi. Yeah. Yeah. Folk horror. Yeah. Like little, yeah. maybe little yeah. aliens. What's your t shirt say? Thing? What is that? Oh, this yeah. is the Nostromo. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Well done. Uh, there well you done. Go. Um, I'm trying, I want to make sure that I, I don't not name check people. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't sound like an Oscar speech, but well, yeah, you there's, know, there's so many great people involved in Canaries. You know, there's the um, American casting crew on the vineyard, and <clears throat> and they all knew each other. I knew them for doing Shakespeare in the amphitheater there on Martha's Vineyard. And then there were a few people I didn't know in Wales that Craig brought in who were just brilliant. And um, Alex Neville, the DP, um, did an amazing job. He he brought um, uh, students from his university where he was lecturing um along for sort of basically like extra work experience right and to get um, you coffee and stuff like that yeah that was which that. brings well, me to the point i i want to i want to be to be realistic I, I there there is something about the film i don't think was very good okay uh the craft service was terrible <laughs> you can no, tell you weren't there it was terrible I, well, no, I t- well there's even a story about that bob Pugh is on set He's, uh, we're doing the reshoots and uh, we, we went, we'd been down to, uh, to Tesco, you know, to get some, uh, a, a popular British supermarket to get some, uh, some food. And I bought some, uh, some ginger nut biscuits, popular in the UK, uh, not as popular over, over your side. Right. You have like the soft ginger cookies, but these are hard, like crunchy ginger nut biscuits. Stale biscuits. They're not stale. They're just crunchy. They're crunchy. Really fresh. Really bitter, fresh. Bitter. 
craggly. And I, said, I, and I said, look at this, Bob. We got you some ginger nuts. I bet you didn't get ginger nuts on Game of Thrones. And he said, uh, uh, I had to pay for my own fucking coffee on Game of Thrones. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I went outside the, the soundstage. There's a, there's, a, there's a coffee stand there. I said, I'll have a cappuccino, please. He goes, £3.50. I said, aren't you part of HBO? He goes, no, I'm running my own business. Fucking Game of Thrones. Load of bollocks. Right, what scene are we shooting? Wow. <laughs> God, and he still shows up for work. I would. Where, how do you, where do you keep £3.50 in the costume like that? Like, wow, let me get my wine sack. Uh, let me... sort of, you know, um, uh, daughter-loving robes on, you know, playing a really creepy character in Game of mm. Thrones. Had a character who, who lived with all of his daughters. And, 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 um, oh. and uh, uh, he's played such rapey parts over the years, but he's the nicest man. Um, uh, and uh, anyway, yeah, no, I, I can't imagine where you'd, you'd fit £3.50 in that costume. No, how but, would you, get, and, how'd you and, do it? And yet, there manages to be a Starbucks cup which shows on shows up on the table during a, a live yeah, show in, right. in, a, in a screened HBO episode. Yeah. So that they didn't even sell to something. that was somebody else's Starbucks cup, a whole other company. Yeah, no, so we, we didn't. We had no Starbucks cups. I was trying to think if there were any accidents which are on screen which could be visible, but I, I don't think there are any obvious ones. I think we managed to catch things. Other than the new script, the folk car thing, any, yes. any anything else uh, you want to plug or, or mention? or? Oh, my heavens. Well, I just uh, shot a trailer for the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival, which I feel like we've, we have to acknowledge because it not only gave Canaries its uh, U.S. debut, but, um, you know, it also, I, I think it gave Sender the same. It did. Yeah, yeah, thanks to you. Thanks to your connection there. We got into that festival and... and um, well, debuted I, I just, there to I just recommended them. They were the ones that made the decision. It's but, very helpful, though. I mean, I think um, you know that everybody, every you know, every every word helps. There's so much competition, and they get so many films that anybody who gets a thumbs up from another filmmaker is big. It's so true. it's good to have friends in slightly below medium places. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, so you yeah. cut the trailer for that, which I saw, and is really great. Um, yeah, so that's that's uh, watch out for that. That's coming soon, and I think their plan is, uh, you know, fingers crossed. Apart from some huge extra pandemic rush, is that they will go live again. In okay. with people in seats. I hope they do. Bombs that's great. In seats, as we say in the British right. theater, um, in uh, February of uh -huh. next year, and I uh, wrote a sci-fi script for an independent company. I'm not quite sure where that is in production yeah easter easter is the thing it's really is the thing is the folk horror is is i'm raising money for that that's okay. the big thing um we have a bafta producer who's supporting us me and craig again and um uh the script is currently with matthew reese so talking of having friends in medium to low Great. places if you want to just text him because i'm sure you know you've got each other's you know he's right over here the, matthew did you matthew, did you get that uh did you that script that uh, peter stray S T R A Y. Stray. Yeah. As in cat. Yeah. Stray. No, he didn't get it yet. He hasn't read it. God. Ah. Well, he's probably on set doing. Perry Give me Mason. some ginger crisps when you have a chance, please. Ginger Thank you. Ginger crisps. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, 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 those are what you call chips. I, I was uh, purposefully I, yeah, making I, hash yeah. of the whole I, uh, transcontinental hash browns. Yes. That's another silliness. Thing. Um, yeah, no, so, so that's the main thing, really. Um, but uh, there's a couple of other screenplays I have. And, and honestly, I'm also just a writer for hire with, you know, who. so if you like the, um, the, the, the characters and dialogue and general banter in uh, Canaries, um, then I, I'm available as long as you're not pro-Trump or KKK um, and you have a certain budget, I will probably work for you. Can you work some material into like, a I don't know, a bar mitzvah or something like that? Would you do weddings? A bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, any of the mitzvahs. Okay, all right. Um, any mitzvah. Any um, mitzvah is a good mitzvah. Young satanic, you know, satanic ritual uh, for mm. teens. Um, uh, uh, christenings. Okay. You know, we'll keep it in. Um, we'll keep it in mind. Listen, you, you heard it here first. Some people like to roast their babies in a, in a comic sense. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, yeah, weddings. Right. I did. Great. To be fair, I did actually shoot. A lot of <laughs> weddings as a videographer when I was younger, and um, the origin of Canaries was actually in a different screenplay, which was like, uh, uh, which was set at a wedding called The Rain, and um, coincidentally, then a, something on Netflix I think came out called The Rain years later. Um, so it's a good thing I didn't go with that title. Um, 
although there's still the element of the rain within canaries um and luckily i sort of recycled certain elements of that and put it in canaries um there, there are i will say it's it's a i think it's a really good first effort i think there are definitely things i'd improve about it um you're not you don't get to you don't get to critique your own film no no that's we, not we, your job I guess not. you I'm are just, i'm just saying you aren't getting paid you know, to do that uh, we are we are the ones it's it's yeah. definitely i mean you know it's i will say this though we had the best time making it and i some people can say that shows like we just i was on set every day like i was i was like wading around in the mud you know um in wellington boots like stuck up to my ankles in mud sort of being canary things and it's so weird because in every day if you're doing that you're like why the fuck am i doing this yeah. but if it's for a movie, especially a movie that you love, or like, you know, if it was on set for you, Toby, or something else like that, there's something brilliant about doing it for a film where you're mm. like, I love, I love being, I love wading in mud. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, the, it's the kind of glee and professionalism from a lot of people, which I think was really embodied by like Martin Lando playing um, uh, Bella Lugosi and Ed Wood, you know, where he's, yeah. He wades in. He wades into the river and says, "Okay, Eddie, let's shoot this fucker." And then well, it's just well, rough, it, pay, it pays off. With it pays spacking. off because it's a wonderful ride. Uh, oh, it's a terrific cheers, guys. film. Um, we also have to uh, mention um, before we before we sign off that this is the end of our horrible holidays. Uh, ride mm -hmm. through through the getting us through christmas and uh and uh new year's without being maudlin and uh next uh month is uh disastrous january and we're kicking <laughs> it off with the poseidon adventure wow yeah uh, that's yeah. brilliant i i have i have one question if i may for you two if i'm allowed of course and that is I'm interested, given your journey so far, as the the Arkin brothers talk about movies, do you have any cinematic New Year's resolutions? You know, in terms of films you pick, how you discuss things with each other for the show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, like we, you know, we, in the pre. This is my last show. That's my resolution. I can't That's talk to him anymore. Oh, <laughs> no, oh, <my> <laughs> old turkey. No, well, we we have recently decided we're going to do a theme every month. So and and we're announcing the uh, the movies well ahead of time now. Um, we're getting so our shit together. That, yeah, so that so that people can watch them if they you know our huge following needs to be able to watch the the movies before we discuss them. As a fan and an audience member, I really love that because then it's 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 sort of the book club I always wanted, which involves not a book but a movie. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna start because all these things are bollocks. Their books and their bollocks, yeah. Social media, so that we can build a bigger audience and maybe get a little more um, give and take with people who are who are listening. Is well, hope. I I'd love that, and I certainly hope you don't mind if I occasionally drop in my dramaturgy for cinematic. I guess it's not dramaturgy if it's cinema, is it? Cinematurgy. It's a uh, cinematurgy. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But just just fun facts. I do. I, yeah, I just, fun when facts. You, when you mention something that I know about, I'm like, oh. And then I become my mum where she sends me links to Guardian. Send, articles. send oh, no. away. We love that. We any, love that. Any, <laughs> any, uh, any help that you can give us is, is appreciated. Help, inspiration, talk back. Remember, we rely on you heavily as our only audience member. So don't slack off. Well, I know you're writing well. a script. I know you've got stuff to do. But... Oh, I d sorry. I do have one other thing which I'm going to do, which is uh, it's a it's a podcast script which you know about, Tony. Which is um, I kind of don't want to say too much about it, but it is um, inspired by um, the Alan Rickman character in Die Hard. Ah. So, um, it's inspired by that, but it's not that for copyright reasons. There you go. Mysterious. I told you, sinister, mysterious. But it's going to be an audio play. Moody. It's going to be um, a podcast. Um, yeah, and it's going to be sort of a mini series thing, which I've written, and um, that's going to be a lot of fun. I want to put that together in the next. So it's a, it's a character named Hans Fluber. Just called Hans. You know, this this is inspired by the Harry Potter thing where they had a spin-off show off Broadway, where it's like you can't you can't um, you can't copyright characters called Harry and Ron, and you know you just you can't no, do that. You Sorry. can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so right. there you go. 
Well, thank you so much, Peter, for joining us. Thank you, Arkin um, Brothers. Oh my God, I feel like I you, you, I've been invited onto the set of Star Trek or something, you know, and I'm oh, like getting yeah. to touch the buttons, you know. It is it's Brothers, special. Time. It is. Uh, it's, yeah. I know. Every time yeah. the show yeah. starts, I feel like I, you know I'm sitting in the captain's chair of this amazing. <laughs> it's just like look at this place. Look at what yeah. we've got. Yeah. Um, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks thank for making for, for making canaries or alien party crashers, whichever you want. And thanks yes. for bringing Welsh exploitation to the to the masses. It's time that uh, this phrase take off, and that yes, this Welsh... was inspired by you. This was inspired by you, where I said, "What what would you like in this to Tony?" And you got me onto exploitation and to the documentary Not Quite Hollywood. And yes. then I thought, wow, there is actually a bunch of Welsh filmmakers I know all at the same time making these films yeah. in Wales, which are, you know have this kind of gutsy, low-budget thing to them, and I think that's Welsh exploitation. I some... really do think there is a Welsh exploitation movement building, and I really do want to get that phrase trending. I think it's brilliant. Well, yeah. let's do what we can to get that going. And Matthew yeah. and I, like we said, we'll be, we're, we're around town car. We just don't want to be a sheep where we have to like touch each other and be on I each other's shoulders. Fair enough. I don't uh, want to do that. I mean, no. I'm allergic way, to wall. <laughs> yeah. If, if there's a way to get you over here as American tourists, like, or, or, or just, you know, actually directing something, I, I would yeah. love that. You're welcome anytime. Just offer me a pint and I'll be there. Anytime, any pub. Any location, me and Craig will sort it out. All right, brilliant. Okay, and stick around. We we have a little after party after the credits. Um, it gets really exciting it after gets the credits. Very exciting. And uh, join us next week for the Poseidon Adventure. Excellent. Or to talk about the Poseidon Adventure. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All of it. Gay Bye bye.